Vertiginous Golf, developed by Carnal Co and Lone Elk Creative, published by Surprise Attack, has the player stuck in a dark steampunk world. But besides this, the game has you playing various rounds of mini golf. This game has quite an enjoyable story, which reminds me a bit of Bioshock Infinite, with the floating sky areas and the dictator-like figure, but a bit more for the allowing of only the elite to join this seeming utopia, and keeping the other people trapped down below in the smog. I won't spoil anything, but when you play through the story, it really makes sense why they added a first person walking mechanic to the game. As it's a mini golf game, you will be playing through the vast different levels, from the easy to the tricky. The game has some really nice physics, with the ball being able to be putted and chipped on certain levels, giving you a nice way of getting around the map. Which brings me to a standout thing about the game, is the out of bounds mechanic doesn't punish you. As long as you're still on the course, by the time the ball lands, it's counted as fine. I found this the case with some of the maps allowing the chipper to be used. Along with the various ramps, checkpoints and obstacles, you find making the process of getting to the hole quite enjoyable, especially when you pull off a great trick shot. The game also includes a nice rewind feature on top of this so you can perfect your shot, but it does have a limited amount of energy before you get stuck with your shot. Along with this, some of the more advanced levels give you an influence bug, which acts like a mini jetpack on the top of your ball, allowing you to make finer adjustments as you move through the level. But bear in mind, it acts like a rewind, so you have to be careful when using it. Along with this, there's also a built-in editor so you can create your own maps with various tiles and obstacles. The tools are nice to use, but I would recommend using a keyboard and mouse. The controls are fantastic if you're using a mouse and keyboard. It will allow you to get some great angles and line up your shots well. I also used the controller and I found it worked fine. I played through the campaign and a few of the other courses to get a great idea of both control methods. The controller I used was the Xbox One controller, so bear that in mind. When it comes to the camera zoom feature, on the controller it only has one view, which is very close to the ball. You can zoom out by holding the left trigger, but after you release it, it'll just zoom right back on the ball. On the other hand, if you're using the keyboard and mouse, you can adjust the view by using the scroll wheel and it will stay in the position you want. I would recommend because of this to use the controller if you have some people around or you're just doing some casual play and using the keyboard and mouse if you're really trying to get a perfect run as the viewing angles are much easier to use. Using the bird to look around is a fantastic tool to navigate the courses because some of them are quite large and complex. On the keyboard and mouse the bird is controlled with the WAS and D keys and ascending and descending is controlled with the left and right mouse buttons and moving the mouse will change the camera view of the bird. The controller is a little bit different as the bird will ascend automatically requiring the use of the left trigger to manage the height. The left analog stick will move the bird and the right analog stick will change the view. Both are still great to use but I found the keyboard and mouse just that bit better just because you can have the hover ability of the bird. One thing I did notice, if you're planning on playing this with the keyboard and mouse and you have an Xbox One controller plugged in, even though it works fine, you'll still have the same viewing angles and bird controls as the Xbox One controller. So I would recommend disabling the gamepad in the options menu. The presentation of this game is well polished, from the sound of the ball hitting the glass to the heavy thuds of the ball hitting the carpet, the sound design of this game is fantastic and was a standout for me. Also the nice music that plays in the background really helps set the tone for this paradise in the sky. Along with the use of a first person movement system I mentioned before was a bit strange but a welcome part. Adding on to this you can also customise your golfer with different attires and do a little customization on the face. It's a nice thing to do with all the money you gather in game, I do like buying fancy putters and chippers so you can show it off to people. But if you want all the fancy gold ones at the bottom of each pages, you'll need to purchase the gold pack upgrade, but all it is is cosmetic and it will have no effect on the game. When it comes to the performance of the game, it ran really smooth at maximum quality, but bear in mind when I was recording with DX Tori, I did get some frame rate drops on the more complicated maps but nothing to the extent of unplayable. 
The only thing I will say is if you're using the Xbox One controller, I don't know if this happens with every other controller, but I did have to remap the left analog stick and D-pad functions as I was experiencing menus doing a strange pull to the left every time I was navigating the menu, but no issues while playing the game. To fix the issue is really easy. All you need to do is start the game and go to the input tab before you actually play the game. From this screen you'll be greeted with a myriad of different input options, but the ones you want to look at here are the left stick horizontal and the right stick vertical, which you're going to map to the left stick of the Xbox One controller. One last area for mapping on the controller is for the D-pad. You'll need to scroll down for this one, but you should see D-pad X and Y and D-pad vertical and horizontal. You're going to need to map these respectively to their button combinations on the Xbox One controller's D-pad. Besides doing these few input changes, the Xbox One controller works fine, but for some weird reason it will change the input sometimes when you boot the game. So I definitely recommend checking the input tab each time when you want to play with the Xbox One controller. But if you're only going to use this game with the keyboard and mouse, it will work flawlessly with no input changes needed. I will say it is nice though that they did add keyboard rebinding and controller input rebinding. I found Vertiginous Golf really colourful and challenging at points with great performance throughout. The gameplay is quick and satisfying with a lot of replayability thanks to the user created maps. If you're planning on buying this game for online, I wouldn't recommend it due to the lack of people playing. Last time I looked there was one game reported in Europe, but when I looked there was nothing there. But if you have some buddies, you can create your own match and play with up to 8 people. With the inclusion of local multiplayer of up to 4 people is really welcome. When you have some friends around, I can see this being a nice game to put on the TV. Ultimately I would say if you like mini golf games, to pick this one up. If you are unsure, think of it as a physics based puzzle and that's probably the best way to describe it overall. And if you are interested in that, definitely check it out. Thank you guys for watching, remember if you liked it, hit the like button, if you didn't, dislike it, or just leave me a comment telling me how great I am at golfing. Just kidding, please if you did enjoy this review, please check out my previous one on Goat Simulator, or check out my quick play on They Bleed Prixels. Prixels. Pixels. Ugh. Wow, it's been a long day of recording. Well, I'm Slender Jim, signing out.